Are you tired of hearing nothing but bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Greg Fritz has been changing lives through the good news of the gospel for over 35 years. This good news will inspire, inform, and change you so you can live daily in all the promises of God. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, this is Greg Fritz. Welcome to another episode of the Good News Program. We are going to get into some new teaching today, uh, some stuff that I'm very excited about that I think is going to bless you. The title of it is called Receiving God's Best. There is so much to that, of course, but we are going to focus primarily on the teaching in the epistles, which talk about this new day that we're living in. It's a day of grace. It's a day of faith. It's a day of a new covenant of forgiveness. And if we can get our heads, our minds wrapped around God's new way of doing things, there's really no limit to what we can receive from God. He has made all of His riches abundantly available to every person. And so that's why He makes statements like this. Let's go to Mark chapter 4 and verse 24. It says, Take heed what you hear. This is Jesus talking. Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. And these scriptures kind of form the, the basis of our teaching on receiving God's best. And I have to tell you, God wants you to have His best. God wants you to enjoy the greatest blessings in the world. They're all available and they're all priceless. If you've been struggling receiving from God or if you'd like more understanding, I'll tell you, these teachings are designed just for you. I've had the best time preparing this and feeding on it, meditating on it, getting the scriptures together. We have uh, as, as nearly always on this program, we have study notes available. And this time, they're quite extensive. If you'd like these study notes called Receiving God's Best, you can see there's like 11 pages of notes. And this is small print. You can make it bigger if you'd like. But you can go to our website and you can download these study notes and you can follow along in the teaching. Or you can go back and, and see where we've been or where we're going in the teaching. It is uh, put together for your benefit. But I'll tell you, this is a subject that I think you're going to want to follow up with. Uh, it is just going to help you understand the epistles. It's going to help you understand the new covenant in possibly a new way. I, I'm having difficulty describing or expressing my excitement over this and the value of this teaching. I know as I've prepared to bring this to you that this is going to help people and help you think differently and that always changes everything. You know, Jesus said, take heed what you hear. One translation says, take heed how you listen. For with the same measure you use, it'll be measured to you. And to you who hear, this is the phrase that we want to focus on, to you who hear, more will be given. In the New Testament, it's what you hear that's going to impact your life. It's what you hear that's going to change what you think and what you believe, and that in turn uh, impacts what you receive. So get ready to hear the right things. Uh, the Bible's filled with, with these promises, these truths that change our thinking, that help us to hear what we need to hear, the way we need to hear. And much of this teaching, let me just preface it with this, much of this teaching is in the epistles. And maybe that's a, an area of the Bible you've shied away from, or maybe you've read the epistles and it seemed a little dry, and maybe even you felt like it doesn't really apply to us today. Well, that is all going to change. I'll tell you, we're going to look at the epistles in a new way, in a new light, and they're going to make sense like they never have before. I encourage you to stay with us in this teaching because it is going to really, really impact your life. Let's go to a, a section of the first epistle in the New Testament, which is Romans. And Romans was written by the Apostle Paul, who, by the way, wrote most of the epistles. And most of what we're going to study is going to be written by Paul. But let's go to Romans 3, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. In Romans 3, and uh, this is, you know, Romans has, um, what is it, 15, uh, 15 chapters. 
uh, or 16, I'm not, it's 16, but the, the 3 is the beginning of Romans as he's kind of introducing this uh, subject. And you'll see here as Paul teaches how it could be looked at as maybe it doesn't apply to me today, but it does apply. The Bible's timeless. The truths in the Word of God were literally written for you, especially the epistles. So, so Romans 3, and uh, I'm going to read 11 verses, and starting with verse 19, it says, We know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Now, let's just stop right there. If you were just a casual reader of the Bible, these words may be a little foreign to you. I mean, I mean, since when have we dealt with the word law unless you, you know, broke the speed limit? Most of us are not criminals and we don't deal with the judicial system in our country, hopefully not. But, but, but the Word of God, especially in the New Testament, especially the epistles, talk about law all the time. So as we get into this study, we're going to understand the word law and works as opposed to the words grace and faith. Law and works being the Old Testament or God's former method of dealing with people, and grace and faith is the New Testament or God's new way of dealing with people. So when you read the word law, it's easy to just dismiss it and say, well, we're not under the Ten Commandments or the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. And here it is referring to the Mosaic Law. So it's easy to just dismiss it or read over it as if it doesn't apply. But let me tell you how, just right up front, to help these words make sense to you today or to put them in a modern context. When you see the word law, even though it's referring to specifically to the Mosaic Law, you can read it this way, religious works. Because religious works are still going on today all the time. And if you're not careful, you have religious thinking. And these things can hinder you from receiving from God. So uh, as we look at the New Testament in light of these truths, uh, it can really apply to you today and help you see some things in your life that need to change, some thinking that needs to change, and basically to set you free. Because really, that's the key to the New Testament. God is setting you free to enjoy the best things that heaven has to offer. So let's read this again, and I want, to notice, I want you to notice how many times the word law is mentioned and, and it maybe in the past you've thought, wow, law, 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 I don't, I don't, I'm not under the law. But listen, let's read it again because it really does apply today. Romans chapter 3, verse 19. We know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Now he begins now to talk about these two new words, grace and faith, or some variation of the word faith. Notice this in verse 22, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth as a propitiation by His blood through faith. Then in verse 26, he says, "...to demonstrate at the present time His righteousness, that He might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus." Where is boasting? Now, we're going to read three more verses, so stay with me, because I understand that the epistles are a little wordy, but the stuff you need, the fuel that you need for your Christian life is found in the epistles. Man, if you want to go find the meat of the word, it's in the epistles. These letters were written for the church or for you. And so understanding them is important. I've had people tell me, I, I just, the epistles are boring to me. I don't enjoy them. That's because you haven't understood how they relate to today. Obviously, I admit they were written 2,000 years ago. And they were written before there was anything like, uh, you know, the IRS or home computers or mortgages or insurance or all the modern things that we deal with today. But truth is timeless. 
And God was smart enough to put the truths in the epistles that we need. In fact, if I could say it this way, uh, he talks about the things we need today. Even though they may be worded differently than we're used to, or they may touch on topics that we're not as familiar with, the epistles contain within them the fuel that you need as a new creation to live life in this modern day. And understanding them will just sort of open them up to, to uh, become, you'll become familiar, you'll begin to appreciate them, and you'll begin to read them in a new light. And so let me read these next few verses, and I'm going to break it down for you. We've got some many teachings to go in this and make it really uh, clear to you. And plus, I'm going to share some personal stories, some illustrations, and I, I just know you're going to love this journey. Let's read on verse 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? No, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified. You become righteous. You receive what God has for you by faith apart from the deeds of the law or religious works. That's pretty simple. We could just take that one verse. Therefore, we conclude. This is the conclusion. He's teaching all this. He's using logic. He's using an argument. He's using truth to come to this conclusion. A man or a woman is justified, made righteous, receive God's benefits by faith apart from the deeds of the law. And that's really the basis of all this teaching in the New Testament, is that works or law, religious works, have been done away with. That's not how we receive from God. And I don't mean that you don't do any work. We're going to get to that much later. But, but the fact that working uh, to earn God's blessings has been done away with. We don't do that anymore. And that is good news. This is positive. This is helpful because, listen, if you learn this new way, there's just no limit to what you can receive from God. He's literally made all of His blessings available for free by grace, but you receive them by faith. So let's read this again. This is just verse 28. We conclude that a man is justified apart uh, by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Then in verse 30, there is one God who will justify the circumcised by faith, that would be the Jews, and the uncircumcised through faith, that's the Gentiles, that would be us. Do we then make void the law through faith? Certainly not. On the contrary, we establish the law. So that is just an example of one of the epistles where Paul is just really teaching. I mean, he's into it. He's talking about law and faith and grace, and he's talking about works, and he's talking about uh, justification. And if you're not careful, these things can become confusing, confusing. In fact, the epistles were not written to be speed read. If you're speed reading through the epistles, you're really not going to get the good meat of God's Word that He has for you. So it's important, and we're going to, to, to really make this clear as we go on in our teaching, the difference between law and works and grace and faith. But, but to keep it simple, if you want the epistles or the, the writings of Paul and Peter and, and, uh, and Jude and John to make sense to you, then you, you can substitute the word religious works for the word law, and it totally applies to us today. It makes it so much more understandable because even though the law, which we're going to look exact and, and see exactly what that is, but even though the law has passed away and, and has been fulfilled in Christ, people put themselves under law all the time. They put themselves under a, a, a sense of religious duty and they constantly measure themselves by their performance. And this is, this is how you take the law and the whole concept of the Old Testament law and you apply it to life today. If you are putting yourself under the requirements of some religious duty, and religion comes in all forms, there is organized religion, and then there's just plain old religious thinking. And, and I've found, and I'm going to give you examples, I've found that there are people that have no connection to organized religion. They've not been to church. They've not been involved in a, a church group or a cult or any kind of a, a formal religion. And yet they're filled with religious thinking. And it, it creates the same problems. So if we can, can move over from, from thinking in religious terms or thinking about law and works... 
and receive from God based on grace what He's done for us and faith, our response to that, we can receive and just keep on receiving. And that's exactly what Jesus said in Mark 4. He said, there'll be those that have and more will be given. That's what God wants for us. He wants us just to keep receiving. Man, if you have, have tried to receive from God and you're struggling, if you've tried and failed and, and you are not living up to what you know the Word of God has promised you, I encourage you to just take a step back. Let's just look at the fundamentals. Let's look at the real basic truths of New Testament theology and let's make sure we got our fundamentals right. <laughs> there is a story about the great Hall of Fame coach Vince Lombardi. And Vince Lombardi, I, you know, he, he was a, a champion in his day and we still talk about how great he was as, at winning. And he coached the Green Bay Packers early on in the history of the NFL. But they said that Vince Lombardi, every training camp, would stand before his, his, his football team, many of them veterans in, in football. They played football all of their lives. And Vince Lombardi would stand before his guys on day one, and he'd hold up a football, and he'd say, gentlemen, this is a football. And, 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 and he was impressing the fact that you're never going to go far and win consistently unless you get the fundamentals straight. You've got to be clear on the fundamentals. And there's nothing more fundamental in the New Testament than understanding law and works and leaving that behind and embracing grace and faith, God's new way of getting to you all that He has for you. I tell you, I want you to receive God's best. I want you to enjoy God's best in your life. And the scriptures make it clear how to do it. The answer is in the Word of God. Uh, I am, as I said, I'm so excited about, about this teaching. And, uh, and, and I'm gonna, I've got some illustrations for you. We are going to describe exactly what the law is and was and in, in historical terms so that you can have that historical background. But we're also gonna update it to today's thinking so that you can recognize legalistic thinking, religious thinking when you see it and move on into God's grace and faith and receive God's best. But let me just give you an example of how legalism or religious thinking can creep up on you. In, in Matthew 6, 7, Jesus is admonishing uh, his followers to, to, to do this, notice this, M Matthew 6, 7. When you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. <laughs> Isn't that something? And I read that and I thought, you know what? People still do that today. Now he's talking about heathens, which may have had uh, worshipped false gods. And like the, the prophets of Baal, remember when they stood against uh, Elijah and they tried to call fire down from heaven and they prayed and cried all day long, cut themselves to get their gods to hear and nothing happened. But and that's an extreme case, but that happens all the time today. People are drawn to law and legalism. They're drawn to works. It's just human nature. And it takes some mind renewal. It takes some teaching like this to get people to leave that kind of thinking behind. He says, don't pray like the heathens do. Don't use vain repetitions. They think they will be heard for their many words. And, and that's a great example of somebody uh, putting religious thinking before the Bible. Christians do it all the time. Pray and pray and pray. Well, we just haven't prayed enough. Well, as if there's a certain number of prayers that we could pray to get God to answer. Let me ask you that. Is God an intelligent being? Does He hear you? Does He know everything? then how many times should we pray for something that belongs to us before we believe that we receive it? And, and, you know, if I said this, if I said, if you'll pray that God will save you 500 times, He'll save you. Man, oh man, people would write it down and they would be writing in saying, hey, I prayed 500 times, I must be saved. I did it, I did it, I did it. But it doesn't work that way. And that's why it's, it, it kind of escapes some people. They are so used to judging their, their, what they have by their performance, judging the, the results by the performance that, that they are looking for some way to measure performance all the time. And we don't realize how prevalent that is in our thinking. If I said, if you'll pray 20 times, God give me $1,000, He'd give you $1,000. Man, oh man, how many people would sign up for that deal? 
20 times, I could do that. In, in about a, a minute, I could do that. And, and they'd keep up with it, keep track, mark it off. I, I've, I've used this illustration. Uh, if, if we said this, because people are so drawn to works, they're so, they're, because it's physical, it's something you can see and something you can measure. And let me just tell you, if grace and faith is not something you see, something that you can measure. It's done invisibly. You receive freely. You have to believe that you receive it, sometimes before you even see it, before you have it. And, and this, this method is different than what we're used to. If I were to go to church and say, if you'd like to be saved, all you have to do is walk around the church building three times. Did you know people would line up for that? That is something they can see, they can quantify, they can qualify, they see where they fit. I mean, I haven't worked, walked around the church three times. Outside, outside, you got to walk around outside the church three times. Well, I haven't done that, so I must not be saved, but I can do it. And they'd line up, they'd buy tickets to walk around the church three times and be saved. But here's what happens. People would walk around the church three times, get their certificate or whatever it is we'd give them and say, you're saved. And then it would turn into a religious competition because that's what religion does. You'd have people that would say, have you walked around the church? Three? Yes, I have. Well, I walked around four. I'm better than you. I did it four. And then somebody else would come around and say, I did it ten times. I walked around the church ten times. I walk around the church three times every day. How many times have you walked around the church? And it would just turn into this, well, and then there'd be some holier-than-thou person say, I walked around the church backwards with my eyes closed 15 times. I am awesome. And, and that's how religion goes. And so you can't get anywhere with God with that kind of thing. And I know that's a strange illustration, but people have done worse. They've crawled across crushed glass. They've climbed mountains. They've done penance. They've been crucified. They've done without food. People do all kinds of crazy things in the name of religion to try to get God's favor, God's blessing, God's attention, when the truth is we've already got it. And the way to receive from God is by grace. That means He's done it and it's all paid for through faith. That means you just believe it. Oh, wow. It's so simple, a child could do it. It's so simple that probably educated people or people with too much going on up here can't do it. So we want to change that. Man, you may be overthinking this thing. I know we've all got a past and we've all got history and we've all got things that we've done or haven't done that, that don't add up and some people think what they've done does that add up. But that, that kind of thing has to be left behind. We receive from God because of what He did, not what we did. Isn't that great? <laughs> Every person has equal access to God's grace. You don't have to work harder than your neighbor. And, and isn't that true? And I, I'm going to give you more examples, but isn't that, isn't that the way it works? I've had people all the time, and, and they, they judge themselves by the people around them. Well, I'm not so bad. I mean, I'm better than some. Or some people think, well, I'm better than most. Well, I'm, I'm one of the best givers, or one of the best people in my neighborhood. Well, that's no way to determine what you get from God. To receive from God, you just hear. What did Jesus say? Uh, to you who hear, more will be given. Man, that changes everything. What? You mean hear? Yes. This whole thing starts by hearing. And to you who hear, more will be given. And to those who don't hear and don't understand and don't really get this New Testament system, they'll have a hard time holding on to what they have. Or he said, they'll lose even what they have. This is good news. It's a new way of thinking, and it really will set you free. Remember this when you read in Matthew where Jesus says, When you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they'll be heard for their many words. Well, listen, it didn't work for the prophets of Baal. They cried and prayed all day long. I'll tell you, we serve a good God, and He hears our prayers. And when you pray in faith, He hears and He responds. That is such a great new system. And to give you a little preview of where we're going, I just have to say this. The blessings that God has for you are so priceless. They are so valuable 
that he couldn't let you work for them. Because if you did, you wouldn't earn even the least. So he had to come up with this new way of blessing you. It's called grace. He pays for it. He pays for everything completely, and then he gives you what you believe for. Isn't that a great new system? Oh, you're going to love this. I'm telling you, the, the epistles are going to come alive to you. The Bible's going to come alive. I, I, I've prepared this and, and for the last several weeks. I've been chewing on this, getting this ready, and I could not wait to get back in front of the camera and teach you these things. I'll tell you, this is specially formulated just for you. I feel like I'm doing an infomercial. We have something here that's specially formulated just for you, just for the New Testament believer living in the modern world. We're going to take the Bible and make it speak to you today, and it is going to bless your socks off. Thank you for being with us today. I'm excited about this journey we're on. Please make time to be with us in our next episode, and until then, may God's best be yours. In this teaching, you'll learn how to leave the law and religion behind to receive God's very best in your life. Receive your free copy of this series by visiting our website, gregfritz.org, and use code FREE at checkout. We have jumped in with both feet into this new teaching that we're doing called uh, Receiving God's Best. And I have study notes available as nearly always on this program because the people who watch this program are interested in God's Word. And we have these study notes prepared for you, Receiving God's Best. There are several pages of them. If you'll go to my website on the home page, it says study notes. Click on that link and you will find these study notes that you can print out or read on your device and, and make this teaching your own. Remember, receive your free copy at our website, gregfritz.org. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Partner with us to tell the world about the good news of Jesus Christ. That means there's nothing that you should be worried about. God's power is available to work on any level, on any problem, in any situation. The faithful financial support of our partners enables us to produce the Good News program. We invite you to donate and partner with us today. Learn more at gregfritz.org. Coming up next on Good News with Greg Fritz. The law was given to people who were living like the devil and didn't know it. They had no standard to go by. They just looked at what everybody else was doing. And you can see in a world like that, that, that conduct could just get worse and worse, like a downward spiral. It had already done that. Remember the days of Noah? The world got so evil and so bad because everybody just kind of used everybody else as a guide and it just kept, to, kept devolving into more and more sin that God had to destroy the world because they were only thinking on evil continually. And he only had just a, a, one family that he could save and salvage to move on because of sin. Sin has that way of, of just, uh, you know, infecting everything it touches and it gets worse. It doesn't stay the same. It's always on the move trying to possess more and doing worse and, and it devolves. So the law was given before Jesus came. Uh, God gave the law as a standard. Watch Greg Fritz Monday through Friday on GospelTruth.tv for more good news.